Brand new week. Uh, all those honors, all those honors are great. Um, when you win a football game, obviously guys have to play well enough to to make that happen. And we had a bunch of them that played very well. Um, I thought the the best thing was one, the answer to what's this football team going to be after what happened in the second uh, half of San Jose State. Obviously, San Jose State's uh, I give them a lot of credit. They went and beat Utah State to the same score that we beat Hawaii. Uh, they rushed for over 250 some yards. Um, so obviously, they're, he's got him, Coach Brennan has got him playing uh, great football at the right time. Uh, I thought our kids played for 60 minutes. I mean, I obviously didn't like the last series on defense. We put some young guys in there to, to rest some of the older guys that were banged up uh, for 53 minutes of the game. Uh, we did exactly what we wanted to. We held them to about 270 total yards of offense. They had 14 points. And we had dominated on offense, uh, our side of the ball. So I thought it was, a, and I thought we dominated on special teams too. I thought it was an overall great performance by our football team, but we were able to do it for 60 minutes as opposed to playing 30 minutes and starting over. And we, I mean, we dissected it down to, we tried to make it as small as possible. We were going to go 1-0 in the first half and it was over. And then try and go 1-0, 1-0 in the second half. And uh, I thought we did a good job. I thought the first drive of the second half by the offense uh, was really good. Didn't kill ourselves with penalties. Now we still had 10 penalties, um, but the dead ball penalties we eliminated minus three of them that happened later in the game, which uh, that was a huge part of our success on Saturday. And on defense, um, we took the ball away. We gained four possessions by taking the ball away, three interceptions and a a sack fumble, uh, gave our offense the opportunity to to go down and score and and stack on it. It was the complimentary football that I've been talking about. So was excited that we were able to play well, and uh, it gives us some energy going into this week. Now we're playing a football team that's coming off uh, all those things that people talk about. I mean, they lost so many games in a row, and and I'm glad that they won. I'm glad they beat San Diego State because all that stuff, now they're not hearing about that. They're hearing about trying to get on a roll and and move forward. Um, Ken Wilson's in the second year. I mean, they play hard. Uh, They've had, I mean, they had Kansas 24-24 late in the game, and Kansas obviously has been a top 25 football team. hold San Diego State scoreless um, on the road. I mean, obviously, the, the week after San Diego State scored 41 points. I mean, so they did a really nice job defensively on Saturday, and they scored enough points. Sometimes you only need – I mean, they needed six. They, they needed one. They got six. So um, they'll come in with some excitement, plus it's at home, plus it'll be um, supposed to be chilly. I mean, all that good stuff. So I'm really excited to prepare this week with some ener- good energy and, and go – see how they how we can do up there in, in Reno. Uh, offensively, uh, Brendan Lewis can do, I mean, he, he is athletic. Uh, he, he can, I mean, they do the zone read over and over and he'll keep it, he'll throw it, he'll stay along the line of scrimmage, find receivers down downfield, Jamal Bell, their number three, he can get, he can line up in the backfield. They line him up at every position at wide receiver. They get him the ball every which way they can. Um, and then Sean Dollar from, uh, from a transfer from Oregon who came with Coach Wilson, highly recruited out of Rancho Cucamonga High School. I mean, he, uh, he can run out of the backfield. He'll, I mean, they line up in the pistol almost every time, the old Chris Alt formation stuff, and they can go either direction. I mean, with the zone read I and mean, quarterback power, quarterback counter, all those things, um, they do a really nice job of, of moving the ball and moving, getting you in different formations to try and confuse you on where they're going. And then defensively, I mean, they're good up front. Uh, you're going to see number 36, Tongiaki Mate Alona. Mate Alona. Uh, he is a great football player. Started to safety early in the season. They moved him to uh, Will Linebacker. Can run sideline to sideline, inside out. I mean, he makes every play uh, you can imagine for him. Uh, they've got him playing at a high level. Obviously, they, they played well on Saturday, got that win. So it's two teams that are excited coming off a win for the first time. And our league is, like I said, Comparable top to bottom with a great game, Boise, Washington, uh, Wyoming this week, Air Force, Colorado State, San Jose State, Hawaii. San Jose State has to go all the way to the island. I mean, we got some great uh, games in our league. Fresno, UNLV, I mean, two 6-1 teams in our league. Uh, I mean, it'll be a great week in the Mountain West Conference. Coach, the, uh, the way you broke up uh, from half to half like that, you said go 1-0 in the first half. Did, did that allow guys to think less? Was that something that you guys were – Having to work on just you know rather than reacting, just playing more freely. Well, I mean we I mean we made some adjustments at halftime. I mean defensively we gave them a, a new look in the second half. 
um, because we were obviously doing something a little bit exotic in the first half, and, and they were going to make all their adjustments. And we came out with the uh, – we went back to our base defense in the second half early on and then kind of mixed it up. Uh, that probably helped a little bit. I mean, it was – that was the idea behind that was give them something that they could focus and key in on, concentrate our guys. I mean, they did a nice job. And then there was a big emphasis all week long about the first drive of the second half. I mean, we just, we deferred on Saturday, which is the first time we've done that since I've been the head football coach here, and it worked out. We got the ball to start in the second half, and we put a lot of emphasis on that. Uh, the emphasis of not killing ourselves with a penalty, and the offense did a dry, nice job, drove it down 75 yards, converted a fourth and one, and put it in the end zone. And I thought that really sparked some excitement on our sideline and, and kept the train rolling the way it was rolling. Was there some intention behind that fourth and one, or was that something you were just going to go for no matter what? No, we were going. We were going to score a touchdown, and we weren't. We weren't going to settle for a field goal. You talked about, um, you know, how last Sunday after San Jose State, there was just this raw disappointment, and everybody was quiet and the like, and you know, the message is we have to figure out a way to get better on all that. I mean, what was the message this Sunday after this one in particular? Uh, they had a lot of fun Saturday night in the locker room, a ton. I think they had all the fun they wanted to have when they showed up Sunday. I, when actually, when I walked in there, it was quiet, very similar to the week before. I uh, thought they were focused on the task at hand being Nevada, and they, they were ready to move on. Now, we, we show them a little highlight tape that Brandon does a nice job of, of creating so that they can enjoy watching themselves be successful. But I thought, the, I thought the temperament was the same as the week before as far as, okay, what's done is done, let's go. And, I mean, you, you, you would uh, expect them to be giggly and joking and laughing, I mean, because there's no pressure to – Oftentimes when you're going through a, a situation where you're losing football games and those things, those kids worry about the perception of what coach is going to think if I'm – I don't think they care. I think they were seriously hurt last weekend, and I thought they were ready to move on tomorrow, this weekend. So, I mean, I, that's a, some maturity to this football team, and, I mean, it's, that's a good sign. Coach, you've been talking to your players about putting in a full four quarters of football on both sides of the ball, and after doing that – against Hawaii, how do you feel going into Nevada, knowing that you're not just telling these guys, but you actually saw it happen now? That's the, that's the big part is they saw it, but you can't become complacent because you have success one time. It's like, I mean, we, we profess and practice all the time. Practice until you can't get it wrong. Don't practice until you get it right. We got it right one time. So you can't just expect to go out there and it's going to happen again. I mean, all the preparation that they did last week has to be the same preparation they, did this, they do this week in order to give themselves a chance to repeat the opportunity to play hard for 60 minutes. I mean, we can't make mistakes. We got to know what to do, how to do it. And then eliminate, continue to eliminate all penalties. I mean, especially dead ball that we made progress on this past weekend. And, but they can't just be complacent and expect it is going to happen because it happened once. And I mean, I thought today was good. We put a lot of new stuff in. We'll clean it up tomorrow and then perfect it Thursday and travel Friday. So um, I think that's the right attitude. I, I don't see this group being one to expect to beat anybody just because they show up, which is good. A lot of growth in the secondary uh, on Saturday, and then obviously, you know, the two young safeties between Jamarius and Derek. Can you just talk about them and just the youth movement that's kind of happening back there and kind of how that's progressing? Those guys have, have gotten progressively better every week. Uh, early on, obviously, it didn't seem like it because we weren't winning 50-50 balls. Uh, we didn't get beaten coverage against Wyoming. We didn't get beaten coverage against uh, um, San Jose State. So it wasn't big plays from those guys that was hurting our football team. The, the ones against Wyoming were two long runs that we didn't tackle well. The ones against San Jose State were two long slip screens that got the train rolling. Um, they've gotten better every single week. And I think I said it about week four. I mean, I've been through this before. And by game six, seven, and eight, our secondary is going to be pretty good. I think our secondary is pretty good. I mean, Christian Ellis is, is playing as good as anybody in this league at safety. Jamarius Lewis obviously had one of the best – statistical games and he played really well now he missed two tackles that that bothered me that he got talked about on the sideline for which is I mean it's positive you don't want to and not everything can be perfect I mean it, it's obviously not uh Derek Moore stepped up with Tavian being banged up and for a true freshman to play as well as he did now I've said it before when you're a backup quarterback and you go into a game and you have all these great moments and you lead the team to numerous points or a comeback or whatever and then the starters hurt and you prepare all next week and they're preparing for you and you go out and all of a sudden you lay an egg and you're terrible and everybody's like, well, what happened to the guy last week? Well, Derek will have a little bit of that this week. They're going to know number 11's back there. They're going to know he's a true freshman. They weren't prepared for that. Hawaii didn't have any idea. So there will be some things dialed up to go at Derek more this week if, if Tavian's not in there. Uh, but the corners, I mean, 
Zach has gotten better and better every week. Zach got the first interception, had a huge play down in the end zone. Dante Martin is Dante Martin. Bryson Taylor stepped up, uh, made some good plays. Hunter Sellers made a couple good plays. I mean, those guys have gotten better and better as the season's gone along, and I think we're actually playing pretty good in the secondary now. I think Dante was missing for a little bit, uh, uh, like the second half of Saturday's game. Is there something going on with that? Uh, nope. Uh, we've got a rotation between those guys now that uh, Bryson and Zach and Dante and keeping Dante fresh. We do, uh, you'll probably notice, I mean, if they, and Hawaii's really good at this, uh, they'll run one of their receivers on a go route against one of our corners and see him in man coverage. They'll jog him off sideline and put a freshman over there and watch our guy back. So we've got confidence that those guys can go in there. So if you see a vertical route set up and then you see one of their guys sub, we usually sub one of our corners so that they're fresh. And then Dante will go back right in. Um, Dante's been banged up here and there, but we got a rotation because we feel comfortable with those guys. This will be the second straight week that you're going to play a team that just played San Diego State, which is a similar defense, though not exactly the same. Is there kind of a challenge in that, in the fact that you guys did come out and throw Hawaii curveball pretty much immediately? The, the challenge is, I mean, defensively we're pretty different, um, not necessarily than San Diego State, but then typical people that they go against, that offenses go against. And having two weeks to prepare for something. Now, two years ago we were really similar with San Diego State. Uh, we've got some, some things that are similar, not nearly as much as it's been in the past, but there are some things that they'll practice that we do that San Diego State does that does give Nevada an advantage. Um, I wanted to give as much of an advantage to our kids as we could against Hawaii, but what we did against Hawaii, we're not going to do against Nevada because Nevada will practice that and um, they'll get, have some ideas of how, I mean, they'll have a better chance of, of going against what we did than uh, Hawaii did because they didn't see it until the sideline on Saturday. So, I mean, that, that whole count and mouse game is kind of fun, but um, we just got to play hard. And if we play hard, um, we'll have a chance to execute. If we don't, we I mean, we got to block, react, and do all those things right. We did in the first half of San Jose State and for four quarters against Hawaii and not the second half of San Jose State. So you talked about you know, not wanting to be in too many of these third and long situations, but I, mean, I think San Jose State, I think you guys had three on one drive, three long third half. We did in the first half. Yeah. And then a few more Saturday. I mean, what, what, you don't want to be in that spot, but what is working when you guys are in those third longs that you're converting? The old line's protecting, and, and Dylan is throwing the ball right where our guys can catch it. Um, I thought we did a really nice job. We, we converted three again, um, 10 and plus. A couple in the first half, one, or one in the first half, two in the second half. Um, really nice. I mean, the receivers did a nice job getting open, but there was enough protection. The one time we didn't protect them, they ended up getting a sack, and we had to punt the ball our first punt of the day. We also had our first procedural penalty on that drive that put us at second 15, and then we're at third and 11. And like I said last week, third and 11, you can dial up a bunch of stuff. You can drop eight. You can show like you're going to blitz and drop eight. You can blitz seven. I mean, uh, we did a good job up front, and then Dylan put the ball right where our guys could get it. Coach, you haven't had the benefit or luxury of having a quarterback starting quarterbacks this deep into the season, you know, stay healthy and produce. Mm -hmm. um, and now so you look toward the, I guess you call it the home stretch. How, how much comfort do you all get as a coaching staff knowing that you can rely on a guy who's been there, who's led the offense successfully, and, and in this case coming off a big win and an award to follow up? Dylan, Dylan's been the voice of the team. I mean, he's, uh, he, he's the one that has won big games. He's the one that's had success and started numerous games. So he carries a lot of weight. But you got to give a ton of credit to Coach Blankenship and, and the, uh, the offensive line because they're keeping Dylan on two feet. I mean, he got hit one time Saturday. They sacked him. He ran one time and slid, and then the other time he ran and, and got knocked out of bounds. He's the only one that's allowed to run out of bounds. Uh, give those guys credit that, that are keeping because they didn't get as much credit against the Wyoming game when Dylan got waylaid three times. Uh, they corrected some of those mistakes, and that, that gives us confidence that, I mean, if Dylan's out there and, and then we've got the package and stuff that we do with Devin, um, I mean, it, it makes it hard to prepare for offensively because the, the great thing about Devin is he threw the ball against Wyoming, so they can't just go out there and load the box with man coverage and know that he's not going to throw it because he's got a great arm. And, I mean, the more they get in the box, the easier it is to throw it on the outside. So those two packages have been really good, and, and Dylan has done a great job of coaching up Devin for those situations also. So I feel a lot of comfort having Dylan out there because he's a winner. You don't have to worry about shuffling? Nope, I, haven't, I mean, we haven't, I mean, shoot. Two years ago, we started a manager at quarterback. So this has been a, a great luxury. 
nothing against uh, Bryson Carroll. I mean, I love Bryson, but they, 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 we don't, you don't want to you don't want to start a you don't want to start a manager at quarterback and think you're going to have a chance to win. Uh, Sign this Saturday, obviously. Um, I mean, is it looking like he's going to be able to return this Saturday, and what's kind of going on? The plan, uh, Cy was out there today. Um, he'll probably be a game time decision. Um, I thought Jay Sean Lowry stepped up and did an outstanding job. I mean, he's a La Cueva grad that played really well. He played his tail off uh, so much so that, I mean, it was it, it gives us some more depth uh, if and when Cy's back. But we'll, we'll go through the week as if uh, we'll have a better idea Wednesday and Thursday what size is going to look like. Uh, Jay Sean took all the one reps today. Uh, Jaden Wilson um, will be the other linebacker for Dimitri because we're going to miss Mahalis in the first half. Uh, Jaden Wilson played, played uh, in the second half, did some really good things. Uh, another true freshman, but uh, I, I was really proud of Jay Sean Lowry. I mean, he, he played his tail off on Saturday. And then Tavian, I mean, as we've talked about Derek, I mean, it's, it's kind of the same situation where... Uh, Tavian was at practice today, uh, very limited in reps. Alec was at practice today, very limited in reps. Um, both of those guys, I mean, Alec has, has been the same week to week and has been able to go uh, a little bit different. It, for, the, for a guy that's banged up in the knee and the ankle in the secondary, um, a lot more space you have to cover, a lot more moving pieces. Uh, both of those kids are, are as tough as you can be. So we'll have a better idea on Tavian Thursday. Um, we won't announce it till Saturday, but I'll have a better idea with Tavian on Thursday. And then not a ton of usage for Luke over the past couple games after he came back from that injury. Is, is he fully 100% healthy at this point, or what's kind of going on? Um, a combination of we're still trying to get sure that he's 100% healthy, and then RD and Jeremiah are playing really, really well. So combination of both. I mean, we have a luxury right now of, of making sure that Luke is healthy where we have not had that luxury the last two years. And we've got that luxury at, at a few positions. Uh, the next man, I mean, there, there's a, that old cliche, next man up. Um, we've had a lot of guys step up and hopefully we can continue. One of those guys stepping up, Zach V. Hill, you've praised his uh, pass protection ability for months now. What does he need to do to kind of carve out a role for himself more in the run game? Uh, keep making plays when we hand him the ball. Um, he did a great job on a third down. Dylan spotted him up right over the ball. He caught the ball and turned it up and got two or three more yards for a first down for a six-yard completion. Um, he does a great job in pass protection. We handed him the ball a couple times Saturday so they don't think that every time he's in there it's going to be pass. Um, he pop a, pop a run here and there, and, and obviously you earn more. That room is as banged up as it is, is so talented. I mean, you've got Bill. Obviously, you saw what Andrew Henry can do when he's healthy. Sherrod White, we expect him to be healthy this week. Um, Zach did a great job Saturday. I mean, those guys are, are really trying to fight for every carry they can get. And that's, a, once again, a good luxury to have. But all of a sudden, one goes down, then another one goes down. I mean, you never know what's going to happen. So he did a great job of preparing for the opportunity. This isn't a question about uh, the specific instance, but uh, sign stealing has been in the news quite a bit over the last week and a half. Um, and a lot of people say that the best way to solve that is just, hey, just put the speaker in the quarterback's helmet and be mm -hmm. done with it, like we do in the NFL. As a defensive guy, I mean, what's kind of your read on that in particular? Well, I know that uh, we voted last week for, um, for this year during the bowl season. They're going to test. They gave teams the opportunity to vote to have the player to coach communication. Uh, from the sideline for bowl games this year. I voted for it. I mean, it's headed that way anyway. Um, sign stealing, I mean, all this stuff that's in the news and all that, I mean, whatever. Sign stealing has been going on forever. I mean, since the beginning of signs. People look across sidelines, see if they can get a, an advantage. Um, I mean, I, I've got a pretty good memory. I'm not, I'm not good enough to be able to try and remember somebody else's signs and then get our signs to our kids and do those things. There's some people that can, and if, uh, if they can, I guess if you get the exact play, it's a pretty big benefit and pretty big uh, um, help. But I mean, you got to I mean we our 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 signs. I mean, there's a reason we have four guys signing, and the live guy changes by series. Sometimes I mean, we we do all kinds of different things, and we got so I mean, you're you're uh, I don't know. The wearable technology will solve a lot of those problems, and I'm all for it. Anything else? Anything? We don't have giant cars with the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, which is not something. No, we just got the big blockers. I mean, 
But we do a pretty good job of closing that blocker so we don't block anybody's view after we signal. I mean, it's great. It's a rule. You have to have the New Mexico flag at every event. And we've got it. And it's big and it's pretty and it's bright and prideful.